Welcome to the Spare Time Physicist. Today, we're going to talk about an effect in Einstein's theory of special relativity known as the Wigner rotation. If you watched my previous video, you'll already have some understanding of it. In this video, I'll try to explain why the effect occurs and go through the experimental proofs. As I promised in my last video, I'll also point out an experimentally validated proof that you will not find elsewhere. First, let's try to understand what the Wigner rotation is. Imagine that we're in a powerful rocket ship and we want to perform an acceleration along the horizontal axis. Today, six of our good friends have also decided to take a trip in space and they're all traveling in different directions. The red vectors indicate their velocity before we perform the acceleration. Everyone carries with them a gyroscope, which is a device that can keep track of direction as you move around. Before we perform the acceleration, all gyroscopes have been synchronized, so their axes point in the same direction. We then perform the acceleration, and this is what happens. Except for our friend in system D, that moved with a parallel velocity with respect to our acceleration, the gyroscopes are no longer aligned, and the displacement angle vary from system to system. This is pretty different from what we experience in everyday life, and to me it is head buzzing that one acceleration can make the gyroscopes rotate with different angles. If we call up our friends on the radio and ask what the situation looks like from their perspective, it becomes even stranger. We experience six gyroscopes that are rotated with respect to each other, but they will tell us that their gyroscopes are still perfectly aligned. They will instead see that our gyroscope has been rotated, but they will not agree on the angle of rotation. This is a pretty exotic effect, and yet you'll find no useful YouTube videos about it. Many university textbooks on special relativity doesn't even include it. Historically, the effect was first discovered by Ludwig Silberstein in 1914, nine years after Einstein published his theory of special relativity. In 1925, British physicist Cleveland Thomas used it to explain the fine structure of atoms. At the time, it was known that electrons have a spin and that the spin gave rise to a fine splitting of the spectral lines of atoms. When physicists tried to calculate the magnitude of the splitting, the numbers didn't add up. Thomas figured out that as an electron orbits around the core of an atom, the rotational effect that I just described gives rise to an additional rotation of the electron. By taking this into account, Thomas was able to solve the problem and the effect became known as the Thomas precession or Thomas rotation. But Thomas only worked with a special case of circular orbit, and it wasn't until 1939 that Eugen Wigner derived a general mathematical description of the phenomenon. The late introduction may be the reason why Wigner's equations did not make their way into most textbooks on relativity. Let's now try to get a better understanding of why this rotation occurs through the following case. A girl named Rose finds Mother Earth very boring and decides to check out one of the neighboring galaxies to see if it's more fun there. On her star map, which is drawn in the rest frame of Earth, she sees two interesting galaxies. Galaxy A is located to the north with a flight path along the vertical axis of the map and galaxy B is located to the northeast with a flight path 45 degree to the axis. Both galaxies are at rest with respect to Earth. Rose jumps in her starship and shoots off with a velocity of 86.6% of the speed of light. This gives her a Lorentz factor of 2 and due to the relativistic length contraction, her ship shrinks to half of its original length seen from the perspective of Earth. Just after departure, Rose changes her mind about the choice of galaxy, and she decides to turn the ship toward galaxy B instead. Let's see what the situation looks like from the perspective of the starship. I will denote this frame of reference as prime. Here the star map is contracted along the axis of motion with a factor of one half, and this changes the position of galaxy B. From the perspective of Rose, she has to turn the nose of the ship 
63.4 degree and not 45 degree to get to galaxy B. Rose then fires her engine and turns toward galaxy B. If we now ask an observer in the rest frame of Earth to measure the change in direction, he will tell you that Rose made a 45 degree turn. But an observer in the S prime frame on the other hand will tell you that Rose made a 63.4 degree turn. And they're both right from their individual perspectives. The difference in angle of 18.4 degree is the Wigner rotation angle. Had Rose been carrying a gyroscope with her to keep track of the direction, it would now be rotated with 18.4 degree with respect to a gyroscope in the rest frame of Earth. So the Wigner rotation occurs because the relative dimensions of space changes with the observer's velocity. Because of that, directions are perceived differently, and the moment you change your velocity, this will induce a relative rotation. It can be hard to grasp, but this is really the geometry we all live in. By now you probably want to see some proofs of this, so here they come. I already mentioned the first and probably best piece of evidence we have. When electrons jump between the shells in an atom, they emit light at a very specific frequency. Each state in the atom can be occupied by two electrons, but they have to have their spin in opposite directions. The frequency of the light that is emitted as the electron jumps from one shell to the other varies slightly with the spin of the electron. This effect is known as the fine structure. This can be measured with an interferometer and, as Thomas showed, the relativistic rotation we just talked about must be taken into account to explain the experimental observations. Another piece of evidence comes from the gravity probe B. This was a satellite carrying an ultra-precise gyroscope that was sent into orbit in 2004. It was sent up to measure a related rotational effect known as the geodetic effect. This effect only occurs in gravitational fields where the space-time is curved. Some physicists say that the geodetic effect is partly due to the Wigner or Thomas rotation, but not all agree, so this piece of evidence is a bit more vague. I promised to add a proof to the list, and this piece of evidence had already been experimentally validated at the time Einstein published his theory. It actually proves all elements of special relativity, but for some reason it is rarely listed as a proof of the theory. It is of course magnetism I'm talking about. In fact, using Coulomb's law, the expression that describes the electric force between two charges at rest, together with special relativity, you can derive the whole theory of classical electrodynamics. In other words, Special relativity explains why magnetism exists, and if any element of special relativity was wrong, well, then magnetism as we know it wouldn't exist. Since it does, we can conclude that Einstein was right and that the Wigner rotation must be a real thing. This next example will illustrate what I mean. Imagine a wire with a stream of positive charges moving upwards and a stream of negative charges moving downwards. The black dotted lines represent the edges of the wire, the red is the positive charges and the blue is the negative. To make it easier to see what's going on, I've spread out the wire, but just think of it as a line charge. The current produces a magnetic field, but the wire is electrically neutral in its rest frame. A positive charge is moving toward the wire and it is experiencing a magnetic force in the negative y direction. I will denote the rest frame of the wire as W, and at the same time let's introduce a system moving along with the test charge STC, a system moving along with the positive charges SP, and a system moving along with the stream of negative charges SN. The y-axis of all systems are fixed to the wire and from the perspective of SW they are parallel. Let's now shift to the perspective of the test charge. As you see the wire is now closer and the green force vector has increased with the Lorentz factor. This is in accord with the force transformations of special relativity. But why is this interesting at all? 
You may have guessed it. As we transformed from SW to STC, the positive and negative streams of charges must have been vignorated. This is because they had a non-collinear velocity with respect to the transformation. In this frame, the test charge is at rest and therefore it experiences no magnetic forces. But the wire is no longer neutral and the force we see is therefore purely electric. If you want to see how this can be so, go check out my video on magnetism as a relativistic phenomenon. The point is that the magnetic force in the rest frame of the wire and the electric force in the rest frame of the test charge matches. Had history been turned upside down and had this force been predicted from a relativistic analysis before it was measured experimentally, it would have been the ultimate proof of relativity and the Wigner rotation. To show visually that I'm not filling you with lies, let's perform the transformations and see what the situation looks like in the SP and SN frame. As we see, the wire now has an angle of 36.87 degree to the y-axis as we predicted. This clearly shows that the system has been rotated. If we then perform a direct transformation back to the starting point in the rest frame of the wire, SW, we will see that we end up in an identical but rotated version of the system. Let's also perform the transformation from STC to SN. As we see, the rotation has the same magnitude, but is in the opposite direction. This is illustrative of the fact that the test charge was experiencing forces from two systems that had been rotated differently. This shows that the Wigner rotation is distinct from a classical rotation, where all objects have to be rotated with the same angle. This concludes the video. If you want to see more practical examples of the Wigner rotation, I suggest you watch my video on the bar and slit paradox. I hope this video was useful. Please like and subscribe to help me get off the ground. And thank you for watching.